Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Ross Patterson Revolution! Brought to you by BlackRifleCoffee.com What up, J-Bulls? Welcome to Ross Patterson Revolution. Jobless. Hi, what thank up, girl? you. Thanks for having me. I know, I know. You're welcome. You're welcome. Gosh. Had a crazy night last night. Really, really crazy night last night. This last night was an old school like writing bender, like LA days. Like, hey, this is going till four a.m. type shit. Uh, okay. I, I look, I, I work a crazy amount of hours, anyways. But I've switched those hours since having children, obviously, so that way I'm not a fucking vampire and only see right. them at night. Uh, <laughs> But we've talked about this on the show in the past. Uh, our movie, 50K and a Call Girl, yes. a love story, is getting uh, the Bollywood treatment. It's getting remade over there. So I've been, you know, obviously going back and forth on the deal and then the script. Uh, I had to send over my final draft of it last night. Right. Uh, to India, which was weird. Um, you know, I, thinking about all the things that are that were old and then new again and what's yeah. happening and re- remade and rebooted and all that stuff. Like I got a little, a little emotional. Like this was the last push off. Like, Hey, th- this is it. The, uh, there's no more training wheels. Thanks for playing. Right. Um, and it, it made me, you know, obviously we met on that movie. So it made me think about that and yeah. then going through that script and everything that, that happened. And I was like, man, I, I found myself, in this email to them, like being oddly emotional about it. And I don't, I don't know that I've ever written somebody like this. Um, in this email, I, I just said, look, by the way, cause I don't know. I don't even know if they know we're using, we've been using stings attorney to go from us to India. So like they're the bridge because I don't, I don't know, you know right. if they speak English at all, to be honest with you, I'm assuming Probably. But but I don't know. Um, so we've been using that attorney. So I, I don't know what translates or what not translates if they even knew that it was me or you in the movie. So at the end of this email last oh, night, okay. I, I wrote to them. I said, hey, guys, since this is this is it essentially um, with the script, I just want to wish you the best of luck on this movie. Thank you for sharing our story. It turned out to be our story because we met on this movie and ended up getting married from it. Right. As the lead characters. And they were like, holy shit. We didn't, you know, this morning when I woke up, they were like, holy shit. We had no idea. Really? Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, I I think when you're a writer, you sometimes, you don't think that actors write and vice versa. And, you know, I don't think very many people pay attention to who the writer is on a film, to be honest with you. No. Which sucks. They do in books, which is nice, um, but they don't. I really do think there's still people that think the actors do everything <laughs> from di- showing yeah, up in, yeah, in yeah. makeup, telling the director what they're going to do. Yeah. I mean, it really is to a lot of people the only thing that matters. Yeah. yeah. Who is in the movie. <laughs> and so I, I don't. Yeah. Yeah. You never know. So I, I thought I would share that story with them and wish them luck because at this point, you know, they're in pre-production and all that stuff, but. Uh, yeah, oddly emotional about it where I was like, oh man, cool. And I'm excited to see what happens. Obviously, you know, you know, these movies as well as I do, this is going to be another two, three years before this actually comes out. Yeah. But turning in that final draft of that script last night was, was wild. Well, it's going to be, it's going to be fun to go see it. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm. I'll it's be- fun that it's it's living on in weird, different ways because it was something that to us, to you, was important. We yeah. thought it was important. Yeah. It was a you know. It's a, and by the way, if you haven't seen it, it's a great it's a great film. A lot of people say it was you know one of my best, but it 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 just didn't make very much money. Um, right. Dramas are always a, a really really tough sell, but. Uh, 
hopefully they have you know better luck over there and um yeah I, either way i'm amped to see it i'll be i'll be curious to see the trailer when it comes out because i'd like to compare them back to back and just see how different it is because like i said there's dance numbers and shit in it, yeah so. i mean they've seen the movie though so they can take from it what they want and right yeah yeah yeah. that's yeah, what yeah. you're getting paid for essentially is for them to kind of take whatever ideas yes. they want from the movie and what they don't right right so you know i i know there was dance numbers and all that other stuff but the, the way the the script is structured of the hows and whys of it um because some look some things are lost in translation where it's like what's the significance of a fraternity party so you kind of you, you kind of try to guide them through i still don't know that that oh it's amazing <laughs> Um, but you kind of try to guide them through that of, yeah. well, it's, it's this type of celebration. And you're like, oh, okay, great. So they can apply it to their world. Okay. Um, skydiving and all that other shit. Like, right. you know, uh, fighter jets. I don't, you know, I, I don't think those, like the fighter jet scene probably won't make their film. Um, but others, look, there, there's a ton of others that will, um, you know. Like New Orleans and and all that other yeah, stuff, like yeah. whatever their party area is, or like that'll they be. They know New Orleans and stuff, though. Yeah, they, no, they but, do. Yeah, but but it's being shot in India, right, so right. what so they're going to, to yeah. yeah, exactly. So, uh, it's it's more or less helping them along that route of trying to navigate what the significance and importance was to this character and his life, and then helping them say, hey, this would translate because of X, whatever reason that was. Um, and it's, it like, look, they've been nothing but gr- like great and like the most polite people in the world. Um, even this like stings attorneys are just super of fucking course nice. They are. Yeah. Of course they are. They answered the phone the other night, like eight o'clock over there. And I was just like, man, I could not get that in America. Oh. <laughs> 2.30? Should I come back from lunch? Cause it's already, once I go to lunch, it's already going to be like. Three, three thirty. So then it's like, should I just go home after that? Probably. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that's the debate. Yeah. Every day in L.A. Um, should I come back from lunch? Are my coming back? Or are we just doing this margaritas for the rest? Of the, are we doing the margaritas for the rest? Yeah, of the day? Because, gosh, it's already it's already four. Yeah. What yeah. would be the point of going back now Those, with traffic? I don't oof. get to the office till five. Let me just knock off. I'll do the rest in the morning. Those are the best. I used to. Uh, God, I used to get absolutely rocked on like, it was one Friday out of every month in LA. I, when I, I was uh, working at Funny or Die, right? Doing sketches. They, uh, they had, they owned the rights to them for like 30 days and then I could flip them to whatever other websites I wanted to, right? So I would flip them to this company called Break.com and Break back in the day was awesome. It was kind of like this underground, like they weren't afraid to show anything on this fucking site. And it, they had like seven videos on their homepage and you got millions of views. Bo Burnham was the one who actually popped off of there. Okay. Uh, he had fucking millions of followers on there. I mean, it was crazy. And I, I did really well there. So uh, the guy who worked there, who was in charge of like finding talent and stuff, he was like, hey man, uh, we're bros, you know, like sure. bro bros. And he was like, I, there's not a lot of bro bros in Hollywood. And I was like, no, 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 not at all. And he goes, he was uh, the Brad to your Chad. Yeah, exactly. Beautiful. And so he goes, uh, he goes, look, man, I have this expense budget that I've got to take talent out on, you know, for the month. How about we get together on the last Friday of the month and whatever's in it, we'll just get fucking housed. And I was like, all right, cool. And That's he was amazing. buying my sketches. Amazing. He was buying my sketches. So like, I, look, the, the dollar amount was like $10,000 a sketch. I mean, it was. It was good money for, you know, like yeah, yeah, yeah. in between movies. So I was like, fuck it. Um, so we would go to this Mexican place on uh, La Cienega, but it was like a, a really nice Mexican place. I forget what's there now, but uh, anyways, um, it was super like nice and upscale where it was just like a pitch. I remember a, a pitcher of margaritas was like $48. Okay. I mean, like that type of nice where you're just like, Jesus Christ. What was it? Oh, I don't know I, La Cienega that well. Never mind. It was on the corner. Just a bit, it, was, it was just above Melrose, right below Santa Monica, uh, on the left hand side. Uh, it's called something else now, and like I, I like the restaurant so much that I took Matt Best there last time after we had a meeting in LA with an agent over over that book uh, about the film rights for mm-hmm. it, and he was like, "Dude, this place is fucking awesome." I was like, "Yeah, it's been rad for years and years and years." They just changed, you know, the restaurants change in LA, LA all the time, obviously. 
but it was a Mexican place. Now it's this other kind of like small dish and whatever, but it, it's just cool. Well, next time we're there, we'll go. I'll take you. Okay. And we used to get f- fucking rocked. So like he would get this picture of like Cadillac margaritas for 48 and he just kept going, going, going. And like both of us just, at, we always left our cars there and it was just like, oof, man, that guy never went back to work on Friday. So no. at, we would meet at two and he would be like, oh yeah, I'm supposed to go back in. Nope. Never. Not Mm-mm. once. Not once Mm-mm. went back. And then you would see people in LA getting fucked up the rest of the afternoon on four so much so that on La Cienega down by Wilshire, they started putting up a DUI checkpoint at five, five o'clock on Fridays. Oh shit. So right at, right at La Cienega and Wilshire. Before Uber? I know. So Gosh, we were all just driving around. You didn't have a choice. So, uh, how would you leave your car? Would you cab? Are you one of those? Yeah. We didn't have a choice. We had to take cabs. We would just drive. Yeah. yeah. Well, are you, we, or you would drive there and then cab back and then try to find your car in some weird fucking neighborhood the next day. Because you know you're not getting a spot wherever you are. And if you leave it with valet, good luck. Yeah, true. They're taking all your shit. Mm-hmm. So there was a DUI checkpoint on La Cienega and Wilshire, which the significance of that for anybody who's at home saying, what the fuck are you talking about? I don't know your Hollywood bullshit, Ross, is that's the, the road where all the agencies are on. So all of the big agencies were, are on Wilshire right there. Uh, even Death Row Records used to be there. Right. Uh, the old school. Remember uh, Penthouse? Penthouse took up that corner, Larry Flint. Mm-hmm. Um, so like all of the agencies, most of your like uh, lunch and kind of early dinner places that, that were classy, like Kate's and all that other bullshit, uh, Kate Manolini's and everything was on that, that stretch. And on Fridays, all the agents and, you know, who don't fucking work. Would just get housed at like two that they had to set up a DUI checkpoint at five, five o'clock. And I remember thinking to myself, man, how pissed off would you be if you got arrested at five on a Friday after drinking lunch? Dude. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And the problem is with LA, when you go on these benders at, at two o'clock on a Friday and leave your car because you got a cab home somewhere, was again, you were either parking in a neighborhood which. The signs flip at what eight oh, nine if o'clock. It's street cleaning. It's you're... Street cleaning. You don't have whatever you know pass for your car that's numbered in some weird Roman numeral. Times. Yeah. Um. Or you're at a meter, and then obviously the meters roll over at like seven eight a.m. By the time you get there, there's a ticket there, and you're just like, uh, all... not only are you hungover as shit, but then you're pulling this ticket off your windshield, and you're like, oh god, this is all uncomfortable. Yeah. Right. <laughs> You start to get the sweats over it where you're just like, holy Uh, shit. uh, Uh, There was also a Mexican place right across from the standard. Um, It looks like a little hut if you drive by there. Okay. And that was another place where where everybody used to get rocked. Uh, The assistants and all that other shit. What's over there? Saddle Ranch? Yep. Yeah, so you're you're heading or whatever. Yeah, yeah. So on a Friday afternoon, you were headed to that margarita joint across from the Standard. Then you'd go to the Standard for a drink afterwards because, uh, like, uh, uh, they used to serve uh, 40s in paper bags for ten bucks at the Mexican place. No, at the Standard. They did. Yeah. Oh. So you could go out back, sit at the pool, watch the sunset, and then have a forty in a paper bag for ten bucks. And that I was more of a Saddle Ranch carafe gal. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, but that was the end of the night. So then after that, we did that for brunch and then end of the night was, ah, so we would go to the Rancho Rio at night and finish with a carafe of, uh, Long Island iced teas. And that was good night, sweet Charlotte. Do I miss it? <sighs> Sometimes, but mostly no. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I miss it with, I miss the way I was where I was unencumbered do you know what I mean like (laughs) that's the only way I I miss more than just a Long Island carafe right right a lot of different things have to fall into place for you to be able to do that Long Island carafe right right so I can't say I just miss that I I really don't at this point I miss it with money I I, with money And, and and I know that sounds weird but I'll explain um so I only had like two really, really close friends, like best friends who were actors, uh, Clayne, obviously, and then a, a Christian Kane who's been on the show. We used to have this pack that whoever booked something 
would take the others out for the night. Right. Um, so we would go hard. And like when you were making money and it was great, it was a fucking blast. Um, sure. Because it didn't fucking matter. Now when you weren't and you were on pins and needles waiting for something, you know, whatever audition to fall or mm-hmm. TV show to sell or whatever it was, then it was just like, oh man, this feels real desperate now tonight. It's like I am at the saddle ranch right um, you know what i'm saying like nothing more <laughs> depressing and for for those at home the saddle ranch is was from uh like sex in the city where they would ride the bull so every tourist would come into town and ride the bull there and was on sunset strip you got to see the whole strip and the whole shit or whatever and drinks and food were relatively cheap and it was good like i i you know you could have sliders and nachos and that type of shit and yeah it was like the only sports bar before the rest of the town kind of exploded later. Um, and the reason I'm bringing all of this stories up, all of these, is we got hit up, uh, Clay and I, about Barnes Brothers. Again, from a couple networks. And Do I had we to... want to talk about that right now? Yeah, why not? Uh, so, the, the obviously, a lot has changed in 10 years or 12 years since we've shot it. Right. But uh, I, I had to go back and, you know, do the, the Bible log lines, episodes, all that stuff, future episodes, turn those in. Um, a couple networks have asked for them. So it's, uh, you know, it's one of those things where it was like, man, the last time I did this, I, like I was looking at the dates because I always save these by dates. Uh, it, it, it appeared like going back through the calendar that I had turned it in on a Friday. So you know where I was that afternoon and night. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. But with, with, yeah. with the explosion of, you know, all these media outlets and apps and smart TVs and everything, like everybody's looking for content. And, you know, back in the day when we did a lot of this shit, you had very few places you could take your stuff. And uh, now, you, now you have more avenues and everybody's looking for for content and shit um so uh, i get it uh i get it even fuck man roku i got an email from roku yesterday who said uh look look, we're we're doing a podcast app so you can watch podcasts on tv and i was like oh shit all right it's youtube yeah exactly but some people don't have youtube and so they're they're creating an all audio app for it too where it's just like all right listen to it in the background i guess more more or less like a pandora Okay. You know, Spotify's buying a shit ton of podcasts now. And uh y- yeah, you you can feel the content rising where it's just like, all right, this is this is real now, you know? Well, watching the Eric Andre show on Adult Swim. Yeah. The other day. <laughs> I love Eric Andre by the way. I just thought, okay, they don't care. I don't think they care what you do. Right? If they like you. If they like you, yeah. It depends on who and, you are. Yeah, if they like you and they've put you on, mm-hmm. I, it seems that they probably just leave you alone, huh? <laughs> yeah, for years. Eric Andre's been on, I think it's in season 10. Time to deliver a pizza ball. Oh, uh, time to deliver a pizza, pizza ball. ball. I love Eric Andre. I love that right. show. Um, That's cool. All about it, yeah. That's all, cool. All, you're not a fan. <laughs> oh, my God. No. I had, I had, uh, I, I, you know, what's funny. So I had dinner with him one night, um, Eric Andre, and I was expecting like, you know, Oh no, he's super boring in real life. Yes. Um, who was it with? He's kind of a stoner. Um, they, they, they used to do this, uh, steak dinner in LA where, uh, once a year and it was, I guess it was the, all the proceeds went to charity. It was, um, uh, God damn it. Who's the guy's, uh, absolutely. I, yeah, I know. Who Eric. Eric and um, Tim and Eric. Tim and Eric. I, I know yes. what you're talking about. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so it's the, just like all. It's like dudes in the industry. It's all comedians. So comedians, it's, it's, writers, though. Correct. Direct, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And if you were, you could bring somebody, and you, but you had to be in the industry. It had to be a writer or whatever. And like, I, I think it went for like three or four years, and it was fucking awesome because you never knew who you're gonna sit with, right? Who you're gonna talk to about shit, and uh, yeah. So I one one of the years was Eric Andre, and I was just like, fuck, man. This is crazy, you know, and I got yeah, to, he, I got to talk to him about the show, but he was not no as, as fun. Um, as... He did Marin, so you get to see, oh he did see what they're really like because you either 
on on Marin, you have to be Mark Marin. Yeah, Mark Marin, you have to be yourself. Sure. This is your one chance to like show who you are as a as a person, yeah. as a person, um, not an act in any way. And he was just boring. Boring. Yeah. yeah. I mean, he was basically. I mean, he was dead. You were kind of like. So you don't want to be on Mark Marin? That's cool. <laughs> don't do it. Like that's what it seemed like. Yeah, they had I, kind I of don't... a funny rapport, but he was not. Yeah, no. S- same. And I find, by the way, most comedians are like that. Like I'm not. I, I like, think, what, what and you I see is what you get, pretty much from me. I but... wonder if you know, and you feel this too. Sometimes, if you're you you are on all the time, you're expected to be. If you're a comedian, you're expected to be funny. If somebody runs into you at the airport, if you are coming out of the bathroom, like you are expected to be funny all the time that they, it seems that a lot of them just sort of so much of that just shut down and they just go, you can't expect anything from me Uh, for free. Yeah. I, I, you come, you have to pay. I disagree on that. And I, I I disagree, but on how it is, but that's how how it is. Right. 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 I, I, for me personally, like, dude, I'm. I'll sit down and chat and beers and I don't, I don't really give a fuck Um, Absolutely, because that's what I do for a living. And I'm grateful that people buy my books or watch my show or listen to the podcast. Like I, you know, watch my movies. I'm grateful. So I'm like, all right, cool. What's up? You want to get a picture? Let's do it. Like, Hey, let's fucking do it. Right. Whereas a lot of people aren't. And you're just like, Oh, all right, cool. And, and, and I will say this, that's probably true of 98% of comedians. I mean, you meet them in real life. You're like, uh, Oh, yeah. You were a snooze. A real snooze. I think that's probably true of most people in most situations, <laughs> just in life, right? Um, people will disappoint you more than they will uh, surprise you. Right. I am in a mood, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> yeah what did James. that even mean? I don't know. It's, it, that it, was like let not me, nice. Let me, let me tell, it was let me not tell nice. the audience what's going on. It's Jabel's birthday today. Mm. It is. Yeah, it's extra- birthday extravaganza. Happy birthday. Thanks. You get, you get down you on too. your birthday. Yeah, I just don't think about my birthday. I just kind of breeze through it, you know? Yeah, like we're going out. I'm 28. Basically Big deal. for my birthday. Big deal. Yeah. I'm oh, I'm getting so old. I'm 28, you know? Yeah, I'm 28 again. Who cares? Like, yeah. You know? Yeah. Couple summers, I'll be thirty. No bigs. I don't ever. I don't ever think about my birthday, and I don't even think about my age until somebody asks me, and I'm always wrong about it. I'm like, oh fuck, no, you're right. I, th- I think I'm that age. Right. Uh, you you don't. You seem to to go in, inward with it. I mean, I think that's probably pretty normal for gals. Is it really? I think so. Let me ask you why. Um, age is a. It, it works differently for us. You look great. Thank you. You're, you haven't, you've only gotten hotter to me. Oh. No, I'm, I'm being serious. I'm being totally serious. I actually have looked at pictures of me in my 20s and I'm like, I don't like how I look. No, you get a lot hotter, Jabes. Like, it's a good thing I met you in your 30s. Sure, we would not have uh, connected. You look a, a lot you know hotter. I mean. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. So, right. I mean, that's that's a that should be a positive sign though of like hey all right cool yeah is thank it, you is it not I don't think it's all looks do you know what I mean um uh, for women your just your stock goes down when you hear a woman <laughs> listen am I fucking wrong when you hear a woman <laughs> is forty yeah or a woman a woman is thirty three or whatever yeah which one are you more likely to be like oh. I'll either I'll hire her or I'll whatever. Like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> All you're hearing is, let's do it this way. All you're hearing is white lady, 40s. <laughs> white lady, early 30s. You know what I'm saying? I'm not 40, by the way. But yeah, no, you you're, you're mid 30s. Yeah. So it's just a weird thing. It's it's ingrained. If I lived in some weird tribe somewhere, I probably wouldn't care, right? <laughs> but it's ingrained in, in us that your stock goes down. And guys make you feel that way, and society makes you feel that way, and everybody. And as much as you want to just be fucking cool about it, 
it's just how it is. Okay. Right? And then the day go, you know, whatever. And it's it's a number of things. But um I'm going to have fun. Right? You, you, well, you seem thrown today. Like you seem a little off off today. I think that's probably it. Yeah. I think that's probably it. Okay. A lot of things are coming at us work-wise too. Sure. You know, this this thing we're going out of town like you know, our both shows are growing and, yeah. you know, it's good. It's all really good. It's just, uh, you know. Yeah. Whatever. <laughs> I like how you just took your time, you know, and just whatever's in your eye. You're, you're taking your time with it. Um. It's my day, you know. <laughs> Maybe I'm not going to shout from the rooftops, but I will take my time if something is in my eye. Uh, and I think that I've earned that right. No, you haven't. You haven't, James. It's true. I no, haven't. No, you haven't. You really haven't. Uh, you know who has is, is our sponsors, though. They've, mm. they've reserved the rights to take their time with whatever they want. Speaking of taking time, you know who takes their time making the finest coffee in the land? BlackRifleCoffee.com. Oh, yeah. Beans. Beans, 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 beans. <laughs> oh, what's up, beans? That's a sweet song, right? Yeah. <laughs> beans, 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 beans. Do you think they'll like it? Should I, should I call them up and pitch that? <laughs> to BlackRifleCoffee.com? Yeah, and just kind of see if that's something they might like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can record it. We can yeah. get a, a, like a nice chorus in there. Maybe a ringtone or something they might be into. I could, I could do like an offset from Migos type of ad lib in the background. Beats. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Beans, 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 beans. No. I'll hit them up. Yeah. I'll hit them up. Let me know what they say. Um... <laughs> Oof, off the cuff, I'm going to say this. That's recording quality. Right. So Get, you might not have to go into a studio at all. They might be able to rip that audio. You could just rip that audio. Go straight to iTunes with it. Um, that's one. That's two is I don't know why you're worried about the age thing because that, that song was very reminiscent of a four-year-old. So. <laughs> right. Right. Could it be the next Baby Shark? Maybe. <laughs> You know, how catchy. <laughs> uh, grab life by the beans and go to BlackRifleCoffee.com. The subscription of the month is the jam. Uh, with the promo code REVOLUTION, you get 20% off of all their beans, 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 beans. <laughs> Next up, we got ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros. How do I love thee? Let me lie in the bed. Uh, let me lie in that bed. Uh, ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros. Finest mattresses on the planet. They did have a monster president sale that's still going on. Um, did you know you can get that adjustable base? By the way, I went to their website last night. You can get that adjustable base for a single. Kind of oh. dope, yeah. That but craft that matic. would be the way to do it. Have two singles. <laughs> and then one could go up and one could, yeah. 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 So. Maybe that's the way, guys. Yeah, just go back to uh, Desi and Lucy days, you know? Yeah, and like if you don't have enough beds. money, maybe you just get the adjustable for yourself, yeah, your why not? side. Why not? And then leave the other side a regular single until. Why not? They earn it. Yeah. So uh, you're just up and comfortable looking down at them flat? If you want to try it, go to ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros. They have uh, the Craftmatic adjustable bases are the, are the best. No assembly required, by the way. It's just you pop it in, you're good to go. Same with the mattress. And they've got like USB ports in the fucking frame and like flashlights and stuff. So like you're good, fam. Flashlights. Yeah. Because I mean, how many times have you gotten up? I know I got up the other night and just bashed my leg into something because I couldn't see. <laughs> I fucking broke foot. it. I thought, I thought I fucking broke it. Old tender foot strikes again. <laughs> <laughs> you just like rolled the whole length of the. Oof. That was a nasty, what happened. nasty bruise. I don't know what happened. Anyways, uh, ghostbed.com forward slash sugar bros. You don't have to worry about that shit. Because uh, you got lights in the bed, USB ports, all of it. Their mattresses are second to none. Ghost pillows are the, the best things that, that God has ever made, um, if you believe in, in that. 
Life uh, after love. Yeah. <laughs> and also, if you are military or first responder, uh, you get an extra 15% off. Just look for the footer at the bottom of the page. And as always, 36 months pay-as-you-go program. No interest for those 36 months, which is incredible. Big fan of those guys at ghostbed.com forward slash drinker bros. Next up, we got strikeforceenergy.com. Got a lot of, got a lot of thanks uh, over the last two months. Uh, everybody dieting and everything is just like, yo, man, I was looking for something like an energy drink without carbs and sugar. A lot of people are doing keto. Um, yes. You know, I'm, I'm doing it as well. Yeah. And uh, that's, why I'm I'm so, not. that's why I'm so fucking jacked, obviously. Look at this. I'm not. Look at this. I live life. Yeah. Um, anyways, with that, dude, there's no carbs or sugars. And uh, you're not drinking, you know, 58 ounces of Monster in the afternoon. God, we're storing it. Was like the worst. Yeah. Where are you putting, are you putting all, all of shit? the cans? Or you're stopping somewhere before the gym every time. Yeah. To grab something. To, to grab something. Or let's say you're going to work, right? And you bring it with you. And, you know, you might not have a fridge or whatever the fuck it is. And you're drinking a piss warm can of Monster or yeah. whatever it is. This you can throw in Don't your car. Don't do it. Yeah. You just put Keep it in your it pocket. In there. Yeah. You put it in your fucking pocket. Impromptu um, workout. Boom. You're good to go. You can pop it into any liquid available and you are good to go. Uh, it's a tasty, tiny little tin pouch. You rip it open and it really does go into every liquid there is. Uh, four flavors. Lemon, a ridge, orange, and make America grape again. 10 pack, 40 pack, 750 milliliter bottle. They have a subscription, which we've had for fucking two years, I think, at this point. Uh, shit just keep, keeps coming to the house. You got the 40 packs in the last subscription. Yeah, because I'm better. You are. And if you're watching the video show on YouTube, again, subscribe to the video show on YouTube at home. You'll get to see these boxes because they actually ship you the boxes that are in the 7-Elevens, which is dope. Like, usually yeah, they, like they a don't, display. Yeah, they don't do that shit, which is if you awesome. Wanted to, if you're having a yard sale or something yeah. and you wanted to just pop these open and you could even sell them. What? What? <laughs> what? I used to sell airheads as a kid. Yeah. Just to do it, you know, make a little extra change. Sell them alongside school. the Girl Scout cookies. Yeah, go to have strike, fun. StrikeForceEnergy.com. Load up, resell them. I don't give a shit. No, I don't. <laughs> eh, if you buy them from them, you can resell them from all you want. I don't. StrikeForceEnergy.com. <laughs> promo code REVOLUTION, 20% off. It's Sign up. Really not how it works. Last though. but not least, straightrazors.com. Ooh, that's a clean cut. Smooth. Are you all right, kids? Oh, God. Man, I'm going to let you have that because it's your birthday, but that really, really blew my, my fucking head You're off. You're going to let me have it. Yeah. What are you going to do about it? I'll tell you what I'm going to do about it. I'm going to send everyone to. You underscore Reich underscore it's on Instagram. Someone made an Instagram of Jesse every single time. Not a video though. Nope. Rip the videos, you guys. <laughs> I think I think they just wanted your weird face weird right before face you right do right it before. of like this. Ah. Fair enough. Yeah. Somebody started a full Instagram for you that, yeah. doing it. And it's really, really fucking funny. It is, but the, it and caught they me by also surprise. have you. Oh, my your reaction, reaction to, to, to like, your, uh, yeah, yeah. That's good. Uh, th then the ringtone, by the way, is, is on iTunes. The You Write It ringtone. Just type in Ross Patterson Revolution and get that. Everybody's got that goddamn thing. It's really funny. I don't know why you want it, but uh, go ahead and have It's it. great. Go it's ahead great. and take it. Uh, straightrazors.com. Everything you need in this life to be a real man. Uh, best shaving products in the biz. I, I really do use this shit every day. Uh, the Smolder Aftershave, I, I, I can't live without now. In, in this lifetime, like nothing will ever replace that. So you've got to go and support this company because. And what's the they Cologne? Oh, the Cologne Smolder as well. Smolder. It's the best. Uh, they got shaving products, shampoos, conditioners, beard oils, mustache, waxes, you name it. They got it, James. They got the shit. Straightrazors.com is where you can get all those products, brother. Man, uh, I hope Sam Elliott wins tonight. Oh. Find out. Um, go to straightrazors.com. Type in the promo code REVOLUTION for 20% off. We're recording this um, in advance, so we don't know who won the Oscars. Right. I wish we were able just to do a live Oscar show. I really do. Um, I mean, we could go live. Yeah, I, it's, it's tough because you've got to plug in and yeah. I, you want the audio to be good. Um, That's true. Obviously, we want to watch it on our couch in our tuxedo. 
and gown. Gown, yeah. Um, but th- they're already trying to predict next year's Oscars currently, right now. And predict? Yeah. So the, the, the first one up that they're saying is this uh, Elton John biopic. So they dropped the full trailer yesterday. Okay. And it's, it's really good. It's, it's different. I don't, know, I don't know what to think of it. So they're, they're, they're wondering if this is going to be, you know, last year's Bohemian Rhapsody. And I hope not. Yeah, me too. But I, <laughs> I, well, I watched the trailer. It's really well done. It almost feels like a musical where his songs lead into really other sings. He does. Yeah. So he's that not takes it to another level. He's dude. not using, you know, fake tracks like Queen or, you know, Homeboy. That's the and and when I saw this trailer, that's that's what I thought going into the Oscars, you know, tonight is is this of he just lip synced. If you give him the award like all right, you that have was my main thing, and you were like, so, "So how is he going to sing like Queen?" Like, yeah, and he doesn't. So here's Sasha my going to. here's my major gripe, okay, with with the Oscars, and again, whatever's going to happen is going to happen. But I, th- you know, probably he's going to win. He's won every other award this season. You're up against Bradley Cooper, who played a, a musician and mm-hmm. actually had to sing. Actually, sang. is actually singing during the awards, and if you lose to a guy who lip synced the whole time. With a bad mustache. I, I have a real problem with that. I do too, but it doesn't seem that anyone else does. I know. It's weird, right? It doesn't seem. And everyone else is loving it. So when I watched this Elton John biopic trailer, um, whoever this fucking guy is, the kid. singing his ass mm-hmm. off uh, through the whole thing. I mean, damn. He's singing it like, because it's, it, it's a long trailer. It's like three minutes long, oh, yeah. it feels like. And uh, he's singing his ass off. It's and it's weird, like he at first you're like, does he look like him? And then you kind of see like he transforms. To yes. where you're like, oh, OK. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because, I, you know, me personally. I look, I, I love Elton John. We've seen Elton John in concert yeah. and uh, his music is timeless to me and always probably will be. Um, I don't I don't know anything about his personal story like whatsoever. And I only also know him later in life you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. like the sir elton john stage is is the only kind of elton john i knew I, I wasn't alive or up and at him for you know when he actually blew up and came out and all that other shit so i i caught on late 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 in life with elton john for me like i would say i was i think not until my 20s where i really got into elton john and i and i think it was probably with uh what was the cameron crow movie Almost famous. Almost famous, yeah. Tiny Dancer. When Tiny mm-hmm. Dancer played, I went back and gave that whole Yellow Brick Road album a spin and then the rest of them and all that other shit. And yeah. I was like, oh, man, he was truly, truly great. That's the thing I do love about these biopics is it makes you go back and appreciate some of these artists like Ray Charles. Right. I had known a handful of Ray Charles songs. But then you go and see that movie and you're like, oh my God. And then you go back and listen to all their catalogs and mm-hmm. you're like, man, these guys were great. Um, same with, you know, Queen and, and, uh, Elton John, obviously, but, uh, yeah, so I'm, I'm amped. They made the movie. I, I don't, I don't know what kind of movie it is. To well, the producer, it it's pro- the producers are Elton John, David Furnish. Right. So they're producing, he's producing his own biopic, which is helpful. I mean, I guess if you're there all the yes, time, you sir. can tell what you were going through and everything else. And you can nix things that. You don't want out there. Yes. It's fine. Yeah. I just don't love a a biased bio. Like I want, I want to really know. Do you know what I mean? What if he drops? Well, what if Elton John drops the hammer in this and says, "Hey, man, here was my life, and it was fucking crazy." Is that I when? Think I, if anyone from is the trailer, going to, it looks it, like it. Yeah. If anything, if anyone's going to, it's probably him. But um, the perspective of your life told by you. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. I, but anyways, he picked this guy, you know, so it's, everything's going to fall into, into place the way it's supposed to. But, um, I mean, I'm here for it. Same. The release date is super interesting because it's in, uh, the summer, I believe I like May 31st or something. Um, so that means that March that's 31st. 
Is it, is it March 31st? 2019. Yeah. Oh, it is March yeah. 31st. Yeah, 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 okay, yeah. I thought it said May 31st at the end of the Yeah, yeah, no. The it's trailer. Like okay, so that's coming, coming up. Now, yeah. yeah, yeah. All right. Ah, that's that's an odd then that's an odd time and I'll tell you why. Yeah. <laughs> Cuz that's too soon for Oscars. Right. So summer would be good and it'd be a better blockbuster or the fall like, you know, cuz Bohemian Rhapsody came out May, May 31st. Fuck off, dude. Damn it. <laughs> My eyes are old, you know? Man, James. <laughs> I mean, I just went into a story of why that was a shitty move um, across the board. It would and... have been, though, and it's good for people to know that. <laughs> oh, it. It's good for people to know, you know? So, so don't release in March yeah, yeah. for those reasons. And then it's coming out in May. All right, so now, now, <laughs> now I'll I'll pivot and tell you why it's interesting to come out in the summer like this that. This changed. <laughs> yeah, it was March. I'm sure no, it was I'm sure. March, and then I went up and I came back. It was May. Yeah, no, I, I get it. I get all that. <laughs> I understand every single bit of that. Um, I was looking at Taryn Eggert, yeah. Egerton. Yeah. Uh, so May 31st means this You're up against all the blockbusters So to put up a, a, a music biopic in the summer Means you think it's going to destroy Because right. otherwise you're going to be up against Some superhero movie And uh, you cannot hold it in, James you Cannot hold it in And the look why you gave they, me Why would they <laughs> put it out March 31st? That'd be so stupid Right? That'd be really uh, dumb. What if, Such what a if weird, James? what a weird yeah, date. Yeah. No movie, movies are gonna come out at that time. By the way, <laughs> there won't be one movie released on March thirty first, right? I don't know. I mean, I oh boy, gosh, I've I've laughed so hard at you this show that I just I yawned like a like a like a mushroom laugh yawn where I'm just like. Boy, I, I, I don't know where your little tiny mind is at. Um. <laughs> <laughs> March, March 31st. Okay, that's different. All right. Why are they doing that? I let you go on the whole thing. Uh, yeah, the whole, the whole <laughs> ride all by myself. I went on the ride all by myself. That's how much you don't trust yourself. You saw May. <laughs> Why weren't you like, no, no, it was May. Because you were so... <laughs> Yeah. Adamant. It's like, oh, no. No, is... you were adamant. You know what I mean? It's like, who? I felt like who's I, I mind just controlling who? Waited in line at Space Mountain all by myself <laughs> and went on the ride, and then I had no one to talk to it about. Oh, it was amazing, was it? No, it wasn't. I, was, I went yeah. on the whole journey. The by whole myself. journey by yourself. By myself. You were out in space. Yeah. But uh, the biopics are, are, are huge. These, this is going to be uh, a big a a big year for that. Yeah. Uh, the next one we'll talk about those. I'm not. I'm not stoked about. What? Chris Hemsworth playing Hulk Hogan. Uh, that's right. And uh, Bradley Cooper's producing. Todd Phillips is directing. Love Todd Phillips. Love Bradley Cooper. I love every other element. So, are do they know something we don't know? I don't know, man. Uh, they keep putting him in shit they and keep like trying to. They uh, just plug these Hemsworths in. I, I know, but they're so snoozy. So boring. I like him as Thor. I have not liked him in anything Thor else that he's no done. has <laughs> no lines. He literally just Oi. Know, is hot. Oi. Swinging a hammer. Swinging a hammer. Yeah. So, yeah, we like him in Thor. Man. So, I, I'm super disappointed in that. Yeah, because. He's going to have to start. Like, he's, he's a big guy anyways, and he's pretty jacked. He's going to have to start triple stacking, though, to get to Hogan's level. Triple stacking. Triple tanning. Yeah. Um and like I said to you when I heard this is Hulk Hogan, Hulk, Hull Hogan yeah. is what I thought. Hulk Hogan, right? yeah. Hull. So Hull has always <laughs> been. <laughs> and for anybody who doesn't know what we're talking about, as a child, Jesse thought his name was Hull and his last name Kogan. was Hogan, and uh, <laughs> you were corrected on that as well. Uh, who told you that? Was it on March 31st that you learned that? Or <laughs> Yeah. 
I uh, <laughs> I went for so long thinking that too. An embarrassing amount of time. <laughs> like I was a I was an embarrassing age when I found out. I'm not going to tell you what it is, but it was, I was an how, embar- how old? I was an embarrassing age <laughs> when I told when I found that out that it was Hulk. Ho- what? How old were you? What is it? It's Hulk. I still don't know what it is. H U L K. Hogan? Yeah, Hulk. Hulk Hogan. Yes. How old were you? Not whole Kogan. How old were you? It's your birthday today. So how old were you when you found that that it wasn't? It was probably ten years ago. Fuck off. (laughs) Are you serious? I was never a wrestling fan. (laughs) So there was never a time when someone could correct me. I didn't say the name ever. (laughs) Do you know what I mean? There was never a time. Like, it's one of those things that comes up too late. Oh, no. This is crazy. Because you were never never a fan. Your friends weren't Mm. fans. So it's not like you're sitting around talking about it. I am crying with laughter. There's no way you just found this out 10 years ago. He's been famous since like 82. But I just said it. I heard it said all together. I never saw it written. Hulk Hogan. Hulk Hogan. Hulk Hogan. What what was it like when you found out? What was the shock? I kept it to myself, obviously. Like I always knew. No, like I wasn't, I didn't say. I'm only comfortable with myself enough now to, to say it even on air, that that's what I thought. Right. But clearly when I found out whenever it was, however it was, I just pretended that I knew. So it was an inward thing where like someone said it or I saw it and was like, oh, like that. Yeah. To myself. Okay. To myself. But anyways, he's always been old. So I don't know how, he's always been old, right? Yeah. Yeah. He's he's, he's He's never been been a Hemsworth type guy so look, i don't know we all know those people in life um who look 40 at age 20 they've just you can never think of them as young yeah, yeah, yeah ever you're just like man i and i know they've been young but they've they've just always been old yeah right yeah by the way today's international margarita day perfect weird weird i've already had five so that's perfect <laughs> That Happy birthday, birthday to me. Yeah. Um, that, yeah, I'm not, a, I'm not a fan of this casting decision. We'll see how this turns out. It's for Netflix, we by the way. We could be wrong. We've, we've, we've been wrong before about casting. Direct. It is for Netflix. And uh, yeah. Uh, speaking of Netflix, one of our favorite shows, You, that we talked about a few episodes ago. Uh, we chatted with uh, Caroline Kepnes. Uh, the author of the book, she's going to come on the show next month. I'm excited. I know. I've got questions. I just said, why? Yeah. Um, so they are, uh, she said they're about to start shooting season two, which is fucking awesome for Perfect. Netflix. Um, one of my favorite guilty pleasures. Super stoked about that. Yes. Yeah. Uh, th- that'll, be, that'll be a fun one. But it feels like the domination of Netflix is just, man, uh, you know, tonight they're up for best picture for Roma. And they've spent uh, $25 million on their Oscar campaign. That's a lot. I still don't understand how they make money. I know. I know. I still don't get it. And if they win Best Picture, I mean, it'll be pretty historic where it's like, all right, that will complete the Hollywood domination. We are all done here. Because let's face it, man. If you have Hulk Hogan and these guys like going to Netflix, um, it's, it's it, like would HBO's you say it's kind of over? the done. dirt the dirt is coming to netflix man i f- fuck i remember so the dirt that because that trailer just dropped too now that one's coming out in march but it's yeah. coming you know to, to netflix i think it's march 22nd don't even bother looking it up james because i don't I, it's may I, I, no nope it's march it's march uh that was my favorite rock book that i've ever read in my entire life obviously I, I was crazy stoked that it was, this was getting made into a movie. I didn't know it was Netflix, but it, it is. The trailer dropped, and I am like 60% excited. Not, I couldn't get full bone on that. I couldn't get a full bone out of my, my pants on that. Mm. It, it's, I don't know. There's something missing, I feel like. Hopefully, it's just a, a one-off, and maybe it's a it's bad trailer. It's very Bohemian but, Rhapsody in that... Uh, it seems look. very cheesy. Yeah. There's a certain look and you can't quite put your finger on it. 
but it, it's just a certain look and Bohemian Rhapsody had it. which just cheesy. It's just too crisp, too clean. Lighting's too perfect. Right. The people's makeup is there's something that is just the grit, some kind of grit is taken out of it and sure. everything is made perfectly. And um with certain things like Queen or the dirt, like it needs to be gritty, right? It needs to be raw, needs yeah. to be real looking, needs to be spring break looking. And I, I wasn't too stoked they cast Machine Gun Kelly as uh He may be Tommy Lee. Great, but I think all the other elements are going to I remember, I, I, I remember reading it when they were when they were first starting to make it and I was like, man, casting this is gonna be a bitch. Yeah. Because I would love for them have to have gotten Vince Neil, unknowns and people that could play and just make it fucking crazy. I, I don't know any of those people, so I, I don't know. But when I think of here's the hard here's the hardest thing to replicate over the, the, the two movies that we just named um, is the personalities. So like with Hulk Hogan, good luck, Snoozy, trying to fucking conjure up. Yeah, vitamins, brother. Right. Say your prayers and eat your vitamins. Because even if he does do it, it's going to seem weird. And yeah. Dark. And then uh, with Motley Cruz, the same way you have Vince Neil and fucking Tommy Lee, whose personalities were just larger than life. I don't know how you replicate those guys, man. I mean, shit. Uh, again, best rock book I've ever read. And I'm, I'm stoked they're, they're, they're trying to give it a shot. So we'll see. I'll give it a shot for sure. Right. But this, the biopic world, man, is, is coming up. And I'm, I'm here for all of that because I, I, th- those are some of my favorite movies. Yeah. You know I'm a gigantic Lincoln fan. It's just, <laughs> it's just hard with, yeah. with the, the rock with music biopics because you can't play. They're not playing the music. So there's right. a, a huge part of the performance and the movie that is faked. And Some, for me, but I so, sometimes it's up to the artist, by the way. So the artist has the decision to do it. The queen, I don't uh, with, like with, with queen. I don't know who made that decision, but with Ray Charles, I know for a fact it was Ray Charles and his family who said, no, you're playing the actual music. Even though Jamie Foxx is like, I, I can sing exactly like you. Right. Because you remember in Kanye's Gold Digger? But That's you him. You have to, I know, but like you have to use their music. You know what I'm saying? You can't do a cover. You can't do a cover. But that's what of they this. did in, in uh, look in the Elton John biopic. He's that that kid is singing as Elton John. They're not using Elton John's voice, right? And that was Elton John's choice, I guess. Um, I there's no fucking way they let those kids sing in Motley Crue. I can tell you that. No, I don't know how you can replicate Vince Neil's voice. That's that one's a tough one. It's it's just so distinct. My problem is that I didn't really love them as a band. So I'm interested in their I shenanigans. S- right. But I was never. I, I'll say this. If you read the book, it doesn't, I don't think you, you like, it doesn't matter about the music. Yeah. yeah. Just, I, so it, I want to see the craziest more of shit that. of all time. Yeah. Yeah. Because I think the, the book focused on more of, look, Vince Neil killed someone. Right. Uh, that's in there. Uh, Tommy Lee with Heather Locklear. Mm-hmm. Um, Nikki Six. OD. Almost dying. Like, mm-hmm. there's a lot of other crazy shit. And then, uh, you know, for me, Molly Crew was rad. You know, like, Kickstart My Heart and all that shit was, yeah. was awesome. So, I, yeah, I, I don't know. There's the nostalgia element, which I'm sure a lot of people with the Queen movie are going through too, where it's just right. like, man. Live Aid and all that other stuff. Um, yeah, I mean, you want to pull up a real Live Aid, pull up DMX um, in front of half the plane, in front of half the world. That'll really shock your mind. Hmm? You ever seen that video? No. Oof. What? I might, I might try to rip it and post it today on just my Instagram just to do it. Um, uh, DMX performed in front of the largest crowd in this. I don't know where they were. It, that's the largest crowd of humans I've ever seen in my entire life for any concert ever in the history of man. And it was the, it's the craziest video ever where you're just like, Jesus Christ. It looks like half the earth is there in front of DMX. <laughs> half the earth. It does. It does. And uh, yeah, I might, I might just rip it and post it today. But, Do it. Yeah. I need to see it. 
But uh, yeah, I, look, if Netflix ends up, you know, win, winning Best Picture, what do you, you what go. do you do? What do you do? Um, you know, because it's the Oscars, a lot of stories are flying around. I, I got to read a, an awesome one yesterday that I was super stoked about. And I always wondered about for years and years and years because I just moved to town at that point. We're, go- I, we're going super Hollywood on this episode today for the Oscars, obviously. But um, uh, there was an article about the campaigning. As I was telling you that Netflix dropped $25 million, uh on just the campaign mm-hmm. for this fucking movie for the Oscar. Mm-hmm. Not advertising just for the campaign, the Oscar yeah. campaign. Um, they talked about, uh, they, I think it was either Hollywood Reporter or Variety did a, did a look back to the year that Shakespeare in Love beats Saving Private Ryan for Best Picture. Why is that significant? It's significant because Saving Ry- Private Ryan is regarded as one of the greatest films of all time. Right. Shakespeare in Love was not. Was not. Was not. And... They took you behind the scenes of what happened through that whole campaign and how that movie won and how it was all Harvey Weinstein. And you realize after reading this article how much fucking power he wielded. And it was crazy fascinating. Because, look, again, if, if you're looking at those movies today, you look back and you're like, how the fuck did Saving Private Ryan lose Best yeah. Picture? That is one of the greatest yeah, movies of all time. Yeah, nobody's rewatching Arguably Shakespeare in Love. Arguably the best war movie ever made. Maybe Apocalypse Now I'd put up there, onesie twosies, but you can flip a coin and I'm good to watch either. Mm-hmm. That's how great that film was. I mean, <clears throat> fuck, man. There's so many moments. Just when that movie, when you hear that movie title, you fla- to me, automatically four or five moments just flash into your mind where mm-hmm. you're just like, oh, God. Uh, you know, the guy, the gimpy ass guy, just letting that guy walk down the stairs and you know, kill his buddy and all that shit. Uh, the first 20 minutes when they land on the beach yeah. is the most intense mm-hmm. opening scene of a oh, movie yeah. in, in the history of films. I think Yeah, that is the most intense opening. True. Tom Hanks laying by that tank. Just one shot, dude, you know, before that tank rolls over the bridge at mm-hmm. the end and you're like, Oh man. Shakespeare in Love, all I remember is goopy jeans, Gwyneth Paltrow wearing yep. that baggy dress for the Oscars because she was a stick figure and oh, yeah. winning Best Actress. <laughs> and you were like, that pink dress. Yeah. yeah. And everyone was just like, really? So this, this article took you behind the scenes of what it's like campaigning for these things. And how that clearly yeah, yeah. And, makes and how, it different. But how dirty it is. Mm-hmm. So Harvey Weinstein, they said... Uh, the movie wasn't even completed and he wanted to get a jump start on the Oscar campaign. So he was taking it around, uh, like screening it. He did a private screening for people on a VHS tape because that was what it was. That was what it was back in the day. And before they had switched, you know, all there's a, there's a lot of Academy members who are old because if you've won an Academy Award, and it doesn't matter what category it is in your life, you were automatically in the Academy. Well, let's face it. Nobody's tracking down the guy who won Best Editor in 1962 to see who he's voting for. Mm-hmm. Harvey Weinstein did. So they were saying, dude, if he was on the board, he would find you and send you a personal VCR tape of, of Shakespeare in Love uh, a lot of them were in Florida because a lot of these these older cats mm-hmm. had had retired to Florida, and everybody had forgotten about them, except for Harvey Weinstein. And yeah, he went into to old folks' homes, an old folks' home in Florida, because uh, there was like three members living at the same old folks' home. Screen the fucking movie for all of them in there, and like all, all of these people who were forgotten in Academy Award history, he found them, dug them up gave them tapes, spent this money, um, would go around publicists and say, look, winning an award is what he would say to the actors, to the directors, everybody on, on that movie. He said, if you win an, an, an Academy Award, it will stay with you the rest of your life. And it is the most historical thing you could ever do in this profession. Mm-hmm. Don't you want to win a fucking Oscar? Because I can do that for you if you just listen to me. Mm-hmm. That was his exact words. And people bought in. Everybody bought in. And the, the workers behind the scenes for Miramax at the time were just like, it was 18-hour days. We were exhausted trying to find these people all over the country, the world, to try to get them to vote. 
uh, privately, Harvey was taking actors and actresses to parties to meet the voters in person. And then everybody else was sent to scour the earth to find these fucking things. Then he would find all the media and talk shit to the media because Miramax would spend so much money promoting their films. He would go to the New York Times and and have personal conversations with them like, all right, great. Can we get more coverage you know, for these, these awards and all this other shit? And he was going around town telling everybody. He was like, look, we've all seen Save It Private, Ryan. Uh, the first 20 minutes is cool, but the rest of it's pretty much bullshit. And that's what he said. So that was, that was the quotes. Oh and, and all of these people came out to do this article and just outed everything that went on during that, that dirty campaign. And uh, Steven Spielberg, uh, they had asked him, they had said, hey, they went up to him because he directed Saving Private Ryan. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and they said, hey, what do you want to do, do here? Here's what's going on around town with Harvey and all this other mm. shit. And he was like, man, I, I'm not in the mud raking business and I'm not getting down there in the mud to do this shit. Um, He's good. Yeah. He goes, I, I, I'm not, I'm not going to do play to that. I think, I feel like we've made the best movie. Everybody has said we've made the best film. Let the film stand on its own. We don't need to do, do the stupid shit. So he goes to the Oscars that night with Harvey Um it was six to five Shakespeare in love versus uh, saving private Ryan uh, before the, the best picture category comes up. It's best director. Steven Spielberg wins. They said everybody from the Miramax side and Harvey and them were deflated. Cause they were like, he won best director. He's going to win best picture. Um, and then boom, they win for Shakespeare in love. Fucking flood the stage. They're excited. They do the whole shit. The campaign worked. And everybody from Save It Priving Ryan was like, what the fuck? When, when you get out of these award shows, because I, I, I work them. It was one of my first jobs in L.A. It was to work the governor's ball. For that and the Emmys, you have to go through one. Ex- you used to. Um, they switched to the location now. But you used to have to go through this one exit. And that, that one exit only to get to your limos or wherever you wanted to go afterwards. And it led into this governor's ball. And at the governor's ball, there was tables and on the tables, it had your movie. So if you were for the Saving Private Ryan crew, Mm -hmm. you were eating there. If you Mm -hmm. were the, you know, drinking there or whatever. And uh, Harvey Weinstein went over to shake Steven Spielberg's hand and he he, he said, no, fuck off. And he goes, whatever it takes now, I'm in because that was Spielberg. It was like, because this is utter bullshit. Right. And uh, they left it at that. And I I guess they, I don't know if they ever became friends or anything else ever, but uh, probably not. He, they said he went to the ends of the earth to win these awards, which is why he was so good at it. I'm going to like the crazy thing about everything that's happened uh, to, to Harvey Weinstein. And I'm going to be honest as an actor, if I was in a movie like that and somebody was working that hard for me, I'd be fucking amped about it. Right. So when I read this article, I was like, yeah, was he a bully and maybe a dick? Yeah, but he, he, he got results, man. Rapist, yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. But, I mean, they didn't have any of that. In, in this article, they didn't talk yeah, about yeah, yeah. Like, it was rapist shit. It was mainly just. Purely just being an asshole boss, head of a studio, and I'm going to win my studio Oscars and all this other shit. Because uh, at the time, uh, it was not only just the prestige of the Oscars, but the bump you get from winning Best Picture. So oh, yeah. they said at the time, Shakespeare in Love was right around the 30s range, 30 million range for box office. After, as it started winning award after award after award, it shot up over $100 million. And I was like, oh, fuck. I remember that. You know, I was like, yeah, yeah, that was a big movie. Remember Ben Affleck was in that too? Oh, my God. Yeah. He was terrible in it. Oh, yeah. He was terrible in everything. <laughs> But reading this article, I was Except like... Except for brunch. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, he's a master of brunch. Master he's so of good in brunch. Mimosas. Yeah. Um, but after reading it, I was like, man, I remember that time period, and I, I still can't believe that movie won. Now I know why. And if you want a sneak peek behind the Oscar thing, it was a great article to read, and, and it reminded me of the Lady Gaga thing of you know her breaking up with the fiancé right after 5 p.m. when the voting stopped. You have to. Because all of that shit counts, man. And, uh, you know, they've tried to diversify the board so you can't do shit like that anymore. Mm -hmm. Um, Because people did find out. And people, you know, on the Academy and and all this other shit found out uh, later on, a few years later, what was going on and how people were buying 
essentially buying votes and everything else. And yeah. uh, they've changed the rules and they've tried to add, you know, a more diverse board uh, to it to to not give you the unfair advantage. But I mean, dude, back in the day, Harvey was fucking winning Oscars. I mean, they had the list in there too. And I was like, shit, the English patient, Goodwill Hunting was his. Remember when Matt and Ben oh, yeah. got up there and we're just like, because even that, man, like I remember watching that. And because I, I had known what I was going to wanted to do at that point. And I was like, man, I am inspired by these two motherfuckers. Like, oh, that's totally. amazing. Totally. Holy shit. Um, but Harvey did that. Harvey did all all these campaigns and he was in charge of it. And, you know, God, that guy won a fuck ton of Oscars, man. Uh, crazy. But anyways, we'll see who wins tonight. And and then obviously we'll be chatting about it next week. Mm. Um. You know, the the surprise is it might be Whoopi Goldberg who might come out and host. <laughs> yeah. Which is weird. Um, I also haven't seen Whoopi Goldberg in front of a crowd doing stand-up or anything like that for years and years and years at this point. What was it? The She used to do uh, that telethon with... Uh, well, that was forever. Robin yeah. Williams. I know. Yeah. But I think that was the last time I saw her doing some form of stand-up. Mm-hmm. Right? She's been doing The View for yeah. fucking ever. Yeah. Um, she's Grey Gardens on the View. Like she's she's living it, you know. Oh yeah, she's not going anywhere from that seat. Um, so, anyways, we'll get to the revolutionary uh, figure of the day, uh, shall we? We shall. Man, I I don't know that if if we've done him, but Steve Irwin. Um, today was his birthday, and uh, uh, Google made a fucking cool like you know how they do a like a like a doodle on their thing when you go to google oh, yeah so it's actually for steve Irwin. Um, i love that i do too i love steve Irwin. oh i do see it with the little alligator yeah and that's nice. for that's for, that's for steve Irwin. nice um that guy was rad man he was like a uh, a, a lot of people were talking about uh, mr rogers um because that that biopic made like fucking 35 million dollars and, and didn't get nominated for some reason, it was just like, what? oh, the documentary. Yeah. 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 What? Like everybody loved Everyone's it. It made a shit ton of money. That, Everybody's sure. pissed about yeah. it. And, you know, they were like, dude, a lot of the feedback was we, we need more people like Mr. Rogers. I feel like he like Steve Irwin was kind of like that, man. Yeah. Like no, no controversy. He's Nothing. Just sort it, of a great family man, a nice guy, uh, you know, the and Bindi Irwin, because we saw her on your your mom was here. I think she was on Dancing with the Stars or something like mm-hmm. that. Like couldn't be a nicer, more well, well spoken like, human being yeah. and, and the son and mm-hmm. the wife and all that stuff. So, uh, yeah, here's to you, man. I, th- that's that that's probably the closest to a modern day, you know, form of Mr. Rogers of teaching kids about wildlife and, you know, yep. helping things out. So uh, here's to you. And that was really cool. Of of Google to do that for him. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Above uh, and beyond Google. Oh. You went above and beyond. Yeah. Maybe they'll do it for your birthday tonight. They'll switch it over. That's what it's actually for. Oh, it, it, the yeah, alligator's yeah, for you? Yeah, yeah, What's the symbolic reference behind I go behind hard the alligator. Oh. against <laughs> alligators. <laughs> I thought you were going to say the other thing. You used to do some gator tails back in the day. Oh, that was another route I could have taken. Sniffy. Sniffy. <laughs> I go hard you against do. alligator rape. Are you going hard tonight? I may have a glass and a half. Okay. So watch out, watch out. Oh, boomerang, boomerang. <laughs> I want to see. Clink, 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 clink. 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 Yeah, I want to see 30 boomerangs on your story tonight. It won't be me, but you know who it will be. Yeah, 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 for sure. For sure. I want you to pop it in, though, for the people I'll that listen. I'll do one boomerang. <laughs> and it's purely to make fun of it. <laughs> I won't enjoy a second of it, guys. Well, I love you, James. Happy birthday. Thank you. You're, Happy hotter, you're hotter than ever. Thank you. You're hotter than ever. So uh, don't worry about the number. Who gives a shit? The world. But thank you. <laughs> society as a whole but thank you no that it's nice though yeah yeah you bet you bet i don't care about them no you don't you don't you don't need to i don't Uh, even leave the house so what am i talking about happy birthday jesse wiseman uh for the jables i am ross patterson this is the revolution 
Good night, everyone. Good night.